Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining the channel. So today on my bench, um, I have a broken microwave. And this is my own. This I purchased on Amazon 2017. So that makes it six years old. And it's working flawlessly up until today. Where today I put something in, pushed the button, and it made a really loud humming noise. And uh, that's not normal. I shut it off right away. I didn't. Uh, I didn't let it cook, and I tried it a couple more times. Made that loud humming noise, like there's a short inside or something, and the transformer is really struggling. That kind of noise, and so I shut it off. So we're going to deal with this. I paid three hundred dollars for this on Amazon, and there's kind of a little story behind this. I remember buying this on Amazon, and then they lost it, and. Uh, I had to get on their case about it because uh, it just disappeared out of their system and it wasn't coming on my doorstep. So uh, that put it back about 10 days it was missing and then they finally found it somewhere in a warehouse somewhere that was, and then they sent it to me. Or maybe they just sent me another one, I don't know. But you know Amazon. Um, so I want to get this fixed. I don't want to spend another $300 on another microwave when uh, I don't need to. That's because that's uh, human nature. But we're going to try and fix it. Now, microwaves are pretty dangerous machines. They're inherently safe if you use them properly. But when you start taking covers off and poking around, they can kill you. There's enough voltage current inside to put you six feet under in an instant. And there's no messing around with them. You've got to be very, very respectful of what's going on inside here. There's microwave radiation. There's high voltages. And uh, there's you can get burnt either by either so let's get the cover off I was thinking of maybe demonstrating it to you but there's really no point it just makes a really loud humming noise and uh, doesn't do anything all right so here's a look at the back they got model number BM 0734 XL uh, it's a 1500 watt model 120 volts for North America and lots of cautions and warnings you better pay attention to all these because they're not they're not goofing around when they say uh, any of these things can kill you because it will. Um, so yeah, there's pause it if you want to have a read. So you're going to need a, a T15 security torx. Security torx is the one that has a hole in the middle. You see the little hole in the tip? That's because there's a little nub that sticks up and it prevents you from sticking a normal T15 in. So we're just going to remove these. Ooh. I'm going to remove these five screws and we'll get the lid off. Alright, once you remove the five screws from the back, there's one screw on this side I didn't see. And I removed that as well, so there's six total. And then you just pull the lid back. It should pull back and disconnect from the front. And you just lift it off. And we're in. And once you're inside, there's some more warnings and some more information on service. Uh, so you want to pay attention to this as well. I'm going to pause that and you can read it. Okay, if you've never seen the inside of a microwave before, I'll give you a little tour of what we have here. We have power coming in on the power cord. comes in the back. goes through this uh, little EFI board. There's a common mode choke. There's a cross-line capacitor. There's some Y-rated caps that go to ground. And then there's our, our main fuse here. This is a 20 amp fuse. And then our power comes out on this black and white wire. Goes to a thermal cutout that's right above the magnetron. And if this overheats, this opens and kills power to the microwave. And then it goes to another thermal fuse. Or it's not a thermal fuse, it's a thermal cutout. And this is in the oven, oven cavity. If this one overheats, it opens up and kills power. Down here we have all the logic and control. We have relays that turn the magnetron on and off in the lamp. Um, we have our door switches and these are interlocked so that if the door is open it shorts out the power to the magnetron and if it so happens that this is able to work with the door open I think it uh, kills the fuse by a short circuit. There's one, two, three um, switches here and I'm pretty sure one of them is called the interlock and one of them, would, the, this job is to just short out 
the power if uh, there's a fault with the door, with the door mechanism, and that will kill the fuse. Uh, there's a little switch mode power supply down here. Usually they have a transformer, a little tiny transformer to supply a, a low voltage um, power for the electronics. But here they have a little switch mode power supply, a couple relays, and the clock, the memory, all this the good stuff for the beeper is all in this print circuit board here. That's all the brains of the unit. After all the safety interlocks and everything says it's okay to power up, the uh, power goes to the transformer here. This is the primary. And it goes to a big thick winding that's on the bottom of this transformer. The top winding of this transformer is all kind of wrapped in insulation because it's a high voltage um, it's a high voltage uh, winding and I believe it's something like 2000 volts AC that comes out of here. So it's quite a bit of voltage and current that that's you know that's the part that's going to kill you. Here it looks like we have a rectifier that's encapsulated and it says on the side 5 kilovolts, 900 milliamps. So that might be a fuse or it might be a, a rectifier. I don't know. I have to open it up and have a look. We have two wires going to the magnetron. And these two wires are for the filament. There's a little tiny filament in there and they need to heat it to get the magnetron to work. So we also have high voltage. All these red wires are high voltage and in reference to ground. And then between these two wires, we have a small potential that will heat up that filament and get it to glow and provide uh, it, magnetron. is like a tube, right? Like a vacuum tube. Down here we have our filter capacitor. I don't want to poke with my fingers. Use something plastic. This filter capacitor here, will what it does is it rectifies the AC, turns it into DC, uh, half-wave rectification and the filter filters it and stores a charge and then there's a high voltage diode down here that's tied to ground and it's tied to one of the terminals so I think what they're doing here is it kind of acts like a voltage doubler I'm not too sure about that though but where is our problem okay so when we apply power here we're getting a loud buzz from the transformer as if it is a short somewhere so either we have a short between here and ground in the magnetron or we have a short in the cap itself to ground or we have a short between uh, this lead of the capacitor and here this diode could be shorted so let's uh, first let's check and make sure we don't have a charge so let me get my voltmeter up okay so I have my voltmeter grounded here and I'm gonna check this capacitor nothing there. Now that capacitor has an internal bleed resistor which is 10 mega ohms and it's a 0.95 microfarad so I don't know how long it takes a 10 mega ohm resistor to, to discharge a uh, 0.95 microfarad cap cap capacitor but it probably take a few minutes anyway but I didn't expect to see a charge on this because uh, of that bleed resistor. So we, we're pretty safe here. I'm going to connect this here and check for the... Yeah, it's still zero. So we're pretty safe as long as we don't plug it in and turn it on right now. That's the main thing is getting yourself um, acquainted with where the high voltage is and making sure it's not there before you start working on it. Okay, so I got my continuity tester. We're going to test for shorts. So, and it, one goes to ground, and this is the ground connection for the diode. Okay, so this is the other connection of the diode. And it looks like we have a short there. You check the other side of the capacitor, and nothing. So it looks like we might have a bad diode here. What is it showing? It's showing. 25 ohms to ground. Twenty-five ohms to ground. Now if I remove this diode connection, where's my let me pull this off. Pull this one off. 
these uh, spade connectors have a, a, a locking release tab. Okay. Let's see if the shards still there. It shouldn't be. Okay. 25 ohms here. And this one has cleared up. Okay. So where are we getting our 25 ohms from? Is it from this or this? Let's disconnect this and see if we still have our short. It's gone. So it looks like we might have a bag magnetron. We've got 25 ohms between here and here. Okay, that's that's no good. But for whatever reason, it's gone kaput. Okay, you can see that I'm putting about 13 volts across between the ground and the filaments. And you can see how the current's jumping around. It's like there's an internal short that's arcing or something. Let me turn up the... Oh, I can smell something too. This magnetron is pooched. I can hear arcing inside. Current going up. See smoke. I see smoke. Let me try that again. If you can hear that. See the smoke? Magnetron is fried. Just out of curiosity, let's remove this cover. And we'll see what's going on here. This this oven's destined for the landfill anyway, so there's no point in trying to save it now. You know, I just for the hell of it, I'm going to see if I can find a magnetron and how much they cost. All right, just had a look on a few different websites. Amazon can sell me one for about $85 plus shipping. It seems a little high. I don't know. I don't think that's a good price for a Magnetron. Uh, but then, you know, everybody's out to gouge you nowadays on, on with the inflation. Uh, but I pulled the cover off and here we got inside. We have, I don't know if you can see this, I'll get a little closer. We have our input connector. And it goes to these two chokes. These are RF chokes. And these chokes are to prevent any RF energy from going back out. And, uh, and then it goes into the two filaments on the tube. And the two filaments on the tube wires there looks like they're in the center. So let me connect this power back up. We were getting a nice arc and smoke coming out of here. Let me see what we can do. He's drawing 2.8 amps right now. And I heard arcing in there. Let me turn up the current. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely something wrong there. That's not normal. So I wonder what happened. Let's take the Megatron out and have a look at it. I'm still curious where this smoke is coming from because it doesn't seem to be any place for smoke to be emitted from. It's right here. Let me try connecting power again. hear it. It's arcing. Where is it arcing? Oh. 
Oh, in inside that plastic, that's where it's arcing. So that's where it failed, right inside there. The insulation broke down and it melted inside and it's all charcoal. Yeah. Interesting fix. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. So chances are the magnetron's good. It's just the connector that goes in to the box actually failed. That's a shame. And it's potted. You can see it's potted with uh, something, some kind of a sealant or epoxy. I don't think it's silicone. Yeah, you can dig it out. So the insulation failed between here, which has about several thousand volts and ground. Here's what a magnetron looks like outside without all of its magnets and heat fins. So it's just a little tube. It's a metallic tube, uh, copper. And you have your two filaments and then your case is grounded. And this emits all your energy, your microwave energy. Same here, you have this that emits all your microwave energy. Uh, brass gasket or seal to prevent any leakage. And this purple thing's an insulator. So that's how they do it. It's like a little antenna, it radiates at microwave frequencies. I'm just poking around here looking at this fuse. It says 5 kilovolts, 900 milliamps. And the fuse is intact. Pull it off. The fuse is good. It's a slow blow. Never seen a fuse like this before. 5 kilovolt, 9.9 amps. Yeah, look at that. A lot longer than your standard fuse. Probably by 50% longer. Same diameter. To slow blow, but it's still good. Now, the big debate is on right now whether I replace this magnetron or just replace the microwave. I have a feeling I'm just going to replace the microwave because I couldn't be bothered purchasing a part for nearly a hundred dollars, putting it in, and then having it die in another year or two again. That would be my. Uh, Check this out. This has been arcing too. You can see it's turned black. And I pulled it apart and it's like it's been uh, overheating or something. Or maybe that's some kind of a... Maybe it's not overheating. Maybe it's... Something got hot here. Doesn't look normal. Definitely doesn't look normal. So all the line currents going through this switch. Interesting. So I found one on AliExpress for 50 bucks and it looks legit. You got to be really careful on AliExpress because I'm looking through all the listings for magnetrons. It looks like they're selling used pulls. So um, yeah, even you read the description and through the broken English you can tell that they said something about cleaning it up and uh, how it might have cosmetic uh, flaws or whatever. Uh, so you got to be really careful that they're not selling you a used product. So I'm going to take the chance, 50 bucks, and we're going to see what comes in the mail three weeks from now. Now this magnetron works. The only problem with it is the input connectors uh, arcing to ground. Now if I wanted to rip this connector out and redo it and figure out a way to connect this wire up and insulate it so it won't arc, this would work. But uh, that's uh, really, I really have to be desperate for that. I'd have to be on a deserted island and uh, need a new microwave. So we'll be doing that. 
I'm gonna order one up and then we'll see when it arrives. We'll continue with the video and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I got a little package the other day. Let's see what $50 gets me for a Magnetron on AliExpress. That. Actually came pretty quick. I uh, ordered it October 23rd and what is today? October 8th today? November 8th, sorry. And it came a few days ago. So that's two and a half weeks, two weeks, something like that. It's actually not bad. This thing. It's original, looks original, and it looks, I don't think it's ever been used, I don't like this one, you can see it's been used a little bit and it's got some brown schmeg and dust in the fins, but this doesn't seem to have, if it was used, it was very light use. Okay, this looks good. Let's install it. Why not, eh? I think that's it. Okay. So one way you could tell if this is a used magnetron or not, it's like this is the old one, and it has embedded in the uh, the brass. What is it? Kind of like a brass mesh here. There's a circle in, imprinted in it from the opening. On the new one. There's nothing there, it's smooth. So I'm pretty confident this is a brand new magnetron and it looks original. So yeah, thumbs up for AliExpress. 50 bucks to fix this would be it'd be worth it to me to get it going again and then uh, saves me from buying another piece of junk that might end up in a landfill. Everything's magnetic here, so it's my little screwdriver magnetic magnetic screwdriver doesn't work very good. There's a big magnet right here. I need to be more careful. With that brass gasket there, it's gonna it's gonna guarantee a leak-free seal. So not to worry about that too much. Okay, I think I'm gonna deal with this. that's about. 
but I think I'm going to clean this tab and I'm going to cut this off and put a new spade connector on there. I think uh, this one might have been arcing. Let's cut this off. I'll pull it out and look at it if I can. I don't know, that's some kind of weird corrosion on there, or it wasn't arcing. Something corrosive. So I'm going to clean this up, and I'll, and I'll actually just cut this spade lug off, and I'll put another one on. And uh, we'll clean this, this terminal up, and we'll put a new lug on there. Yeah, like this corrosion, some kind, some kind of acid or something was on there. I wonder if that was uh, from the manufacturer. Just put that on there long enough so that the warranty survives. these plastic things off. There we go. solder it too. Like using two special remains voltage. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I guess you want to space this 
both equal distance from the transformer and the wall just so it's not up against one or the other give it some room to it is high voltage everything else is connected I remember connecting that back and uh, the diode screws tight fuse is intact everything else is good all the connectors the fan I don't know I don't think I'll service the fan I think it's working good I'll probably just give it a little clean there's a little bit of dust in here not bad for six years I'll give it a clean and then we'll put the lid on in case you're wondering about the lamp it's right here it's a 75 watt no, that's not so, that can't be 75 watts let's pull this off Got cell tape around it. But you'd unplug these two. And I think you just have to get a good grip on it. There. And uh, it's pretty easy to put back in, I guess. You can put your replacement in, snap it in. It's really bite. That's all there is to it. So make sure you clean the inside of the lid. On this one, that had dust here, um, stuck to the wall, and but you got to remember that's that where the high voltage is, and you don't want any coronas going on there. So clean all that dust up so it's clean and smooth. And there's nothing for, uh, you know, high voltage to and clean the vents too. The vents were plugged with dust because they can't like kind of like a filter when the, the fans are running. So what you're going to have on the front edge of your lid is these uh, catches and uh, they're bent on all three sides and they're bent to fit onto these flanges. There's one here, here, and here. And the trick is you have to get them over to hook on those flanges before you push it forward. Just line it up and then shove it. And you got all three sides lined up, just shove it forward. And that locks the front in. And then it's a matter of putting your screws back. So these silly uh, security torques screws that they have in here, I'm going to get rid of these. These are M4 thread, so any M4 screw, machine screw will work. I'll pick out something nice like that maybe. And I'll throw these in the garbage. Okay, I got about two or three hundred milliliters of water. Seven kilowatts. It's working. It doesn't have the same sound. Yeah, it's definitely working. That's it's warm now. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Next, we'll get on back onto some audio gear again. Thanks. Take care.